Gene interviews Money Incorporated. A bunch of Las Vegas references. They don't, they don't make bets they didn't, can't win. It's our city. The city of money, they say. And he can't beat a dog in his own backyard. And IRS promises to, ta- promises to take Beefcake's mask off and beat him into oblivion. And this was the first time in the show they made reference to Hulk Hogan having some sort of accident the night before. By the way, um, in my rant about Doink, did we even mention there was a second Doink? At some point I did. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, it was, it was weird. They and mentioned they go it. on for the whole rest of the show, whether it was an illusion or not. They uh, yes. they, they mentioned an accident, okay? Mm-hmm. But then later, Hogan did a promo, and uh, he claimed that uh, Money, Inc. had hired well, when, when, someone to rough him up. When IRS said it was an accident, he was being sarcastic. I see. Okay. He, he, I thought the, the announcers was, yes. said it was an accident. Yes. The accident was they paid somebody to beat up Hulk. Okay, so if you guys don't know, Hulk Hogan shows up for this next match, and he's got a giant fucking black eye. I mean, it looks horrible. And uh, Hogan's story is that he was out on the water. Yes. And there was a jet ski coming at him. And his claim is, I tried to go underwater to get out of the way, but I had a life jacket on, so I floated up and was hit by the jet ski. That's his story. That's a worse story than the other story I've heard. The other story, obviously, is that uh, Liz and Randy had an argument, Mm -hmm. and Liz left and went to Hogan's house, Hogan and his then-wife, and uh, Randy Savage got wind of this and was very unhappy, and he punched Hulk Hogan in the eye, okay? So, uh, you know, everyone's got their side of the story. Nobody was there to know except for Hogan, and Savage is now dead. So I, I mean, no one really knows what happened. But I mean, when you think about it, I mean... The second story seems a lot more plausible. Well... You get hit by a jet ski, say, you and your only injury a is a black jet ski? eye? Yeah, it's like, I think a lot more damage would have occurred. <laughs> like, fucking Brutus BK got hit by a, a lady's foot, yes. and his face was shattered, legitimately Ooh. shattered. Wasn't, and Hogan's claiming he got hit by a fucking jet ski, and he got a wasn't black her eye. Foot in a water ski. At well, the time? sure, but the point is, like, you know, it was a foot, and his face was shattered. And Hogan's claiming he got hit by a fucking jet ski and got a black eye. So anyway, I don't know what the truth is, but I mean, most people seem to believe that the truth is that Randy Savage fucking decked him. Well, I which wa- is really interesting to then watch Randy Savage call this match. Ye- and- yes, because throughout the show when he talks about it, look at that, look at Hogan's black eye. Uh, I must have been a real cheap shot, and I don't know what happened. I wasn't there, but I can tell you when Randy Savage was talking about Hulk Hogan's black eye, there was glee in his voice. <laughs> well, you know. All right, so they're doing this match. It's the Mega Maniacs versus Money Incorporated. I don't know. <laughs> it's <laughs> rotten, Vinny. Just say it. It's it has atrocious. moments. Uh, 1993, lean Hulk Hogan. Uh, slim Hulk Hogan actually looks better. Oh, dude, he looked great. Mm-hmm. And you see him nowadays, and he's all beat up and just yeah. ravaged. And yes. He blames the leg drop and everything like that. And uh, I'm just thinking, if you don't look like this your whole career, you'd probably be feeling a lot better right now. It could be, yeah. So, Money Incorporated for like a year have been champions, and they would get countered out all the time. TV, house shows, I guess not pay-per-views, and didn't have that many. But So, here they try to get counted out, and mid-match, they add the stip that the title contains hands on a count-out. So, they go running back there. Hogan gets put in a million-dollar dream that may have been longer than Bob Backlund's entire match. <laughs> uh, we get a beefcake hot tag. Goes on but, for a long time. Before that, hmm. the baby faces... Hogan is in Ted DiBiase's finish, the million dollar dream, and he's going to sleep. Yes. And the babyface Brutus Beefcake just runs in and puts Ted DiBiase in a sleeper yes. to cheat and keep Hulk Hogan from losing this match. Yes. So they double down out of this double sleeper hold. Yes. That, with that, the baby faces are cheating. That, that, that. And even before that, there was there was the back rakes and the eye pokes from Hogan that he did like all the time. He always did, yeah. The, 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 yeah I'm not the, sure I believe this guy's jet ski story after all of this cheating. The, the illegal this, man this putting a reputable character. The illegal man using a sleeper hold as IRS distracted the ref for about a minute and a half. Yeah, and why was he distracting the ref? He's saying, "Ref, turn around. There's two fuckers in the ring right now. They're cheating." Yes, they're good guys and they're cheating. 
<laughs> oh, it got worse afterwards. Oh, yeah. So then Beefcake gets cut off, and they pull his mask off, and they're beating up his face. The titanium face mask. Yes. <laughs> it's got a titanium face mask to protect his titanium face. Right. That Hogan trained by smashing it with a steel <laughs> yeah. attache case. That's right. I forgot about but that. But now these punches are just like, oh, my God, he's going to die. They should have made the mask out of magnets, then they couldn't have taken it off. Hey. I don't know if titanium is magnetic, though. Wouldn't need that stupid strap. It's just right on there. So there's a double clothesline. He gets a sleeper, and there's a ref bump, and Hogan gets a hot tag, and IRS tries to hit him with the death mask that Beefcake was wearing, but Hogan gets it, and he uses it as a weapon. So he pins one dude, and Beefcake pins the other, but the referee is still down. Jimmy Hart gets in the ring. (laughs) He attempts to revive the referee briefly. (laughs) It doesn't work. He goes to plan B, and there is a plan B, because he pulls off his jacket, turns it inside out, and the inside has black and white stripes like an official shirt. Sure. They had a secret plan decades before Hunter and John. They did. And he puts on the referee's jacket, Jimmy Hart does, and he counts both pins to award the team he manages the World Tag Team title. You know, it's funny, but like people make fun of the fans today, and if you go on Twitter, read my timeline, it's like, these are some dumb fuckers. But man, <laughs> compared to these people at Mania 9, these people thought they won the tag titles. When Jimmy Hart put his inside-out jacket and counted the pin, they were like, yeah, we got new champs! Golly, the baby people. faces thought this was legal. Yeah. Yeah. So did anyone notice that when they sent a second referee down to lay down the law, on the entire refereeing roster, and they had like eight of them. They send Danny Davis. It's Danny Davis, who three years ago, uh, longer than that, six years ago at WrestleMania, was doing, uh, he was wrestling, doing a heel ref gimmick, working with Jimmy Hart. Well, he was replacing a guy who fucked Hulk Hogan out of the world title with Andre the Giant. That's true. Yes. God, these, this whole thing's all fucked this up. Whole, all these referees no are Hogan terrible. Hogan was cheating. Yeah. He didn't trust anyone. Yes. So Danny Davis says, no, no, you can't hit dudes with a weapon. It's a DQ. Money Incorporated are still champions. And so Beefcake and Hogan now, after cheating the entire match and losing fair and square because they were cheating, these two 500-pound muscle heads between them, they go to beat up Danny Davis. But Jimmy Hart says, no, no, I'll handle this. To beat up the referee who made a fair call. And Jimmy Hart throws Danny Davis out of the ring. The dog hates this Hogan. Mm-hmm. Dana Davis going out of the ring was the best bump of the entire show. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I apparently you mentioned there were two doinks. Did you mention the referees looking for the second doink under the ring? I and did not. Both of these idiots couldn't find doink. I did not mention that part. <laughs> it's like, God, he's fucking So, rips. yeah, this was very stupid and not especially good. But if I'm being honest, it had by far the best reactions of anything on the show so far. Well, you so. know, I don't want to do spoilers or anything like that. But uh, Hulk Hogan wins the title in the main event, as we'll get to. What? And uh, if you watch this show as a fan, you're so fucking sick of this guy already. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. But, but, the fans were not sick of this guy. No. They fucking loved Hulk Hogan. They loved him in this tag match. They loved him when he did an interview later, uh, randomly and, and, uh, you know, without remorse, throwing out racist terms. And then they fucking love him when he comes out after Bret Hart's defeated. They fucking love him when he wins. It's the biggest pop of the night by about 10. It's just amazing to yeah. see the reactions, but just watching it and be like, God, look at this fucker. And, you know, everyone who was a hardcore fan back then thought the same thing. Look at this fucker walking out of here with this title. God, horrible. They never did anything with it. Well, I think they realized their mistake. It's and, amazing. Uh, you know. And did you know? Did you tell the people about the uh, the briefcase after the fact? They steal. Oh, yeah, they fucking stole money. <laughs> they steal yeah. money incorporated's briefcase. They open it. There's important paperwork in there, tax records and whatnot. They destroy mm-hmm. those, and they find a big wad of cash. That that seems like something that could be like a federal offense. It might be actually. Yeah, probably. I don't think you're allowed to do that. They find a big wad of cash. And they begin. Hulk Hogan grabs big fistfuls of cash and begins to thrust his pelvis for a while. Then he just flexes, and I actually thought he was going to leave and take the money. Eventually, he did at least pass it out to the people. So he was more Robin Hood than uh, Bernie Madoff or whatever. But Robin Hood was still a crook. He was. Yeah, but he was a good crook. <laughs> Till he steals your money. I didn't say that. Yeah, the only one <laughs> I'm that saying that. 
The only one that didn't get any money apparently was Natalie Cole because she was interviewed. Though. Natalie Cole was interviewed. She said she didn't get any of Money Incorporated's I money. I just like that we got two heels. And granted, one guy's gimmick is he's an IRS. He's a tax man, as they call him. Mm-hmm. But uh, he brings a weapon, a Halliburton to the ring. But he hasn't put bricks in it. They're at the, it's an attache there case. Was a there was one brick. <laughs> there was one there brick, was one and, brick. Then money, <laughs> and money, money and papers. Oh, he's a practical man. So it was. Uh, it was. Uh, what, uh, what do they call it? Where you put a heavy thing on stuff? You know <laughs> what I mean? Weight. Paperweight. Yeah, that's what it was. It's just a paperweight. Oh, Lance knew, Vinny. I guess he did. I, yes. I guess he did. The dramatic reading of the Hulk Hogan Brutus Beefcake promo. Please welcome the Mega Maniacs. Brutus the Barber Beefcake and Hulk Hogan. Well, you know something, Mean Gene? Now more than ever, with just one week away, I'm aware of how destiny is going to take its course, brother. Because just a few short weeks ago, bro, when I was laying in the weeds at Venice Beach, California, and I had Monday Night Raw tuned in, I saw Money Incorporated run across the ring with a metal attache case, with the speed of a lightning bolt. And as it crashed into Brutus, the bionic barber beefcake, Blood Brothers' face, I saw what I didn't want to see. I heard what I didn't want to hear. The emotions ran from head to toe. I chilled. I goosebumped. And I broke a sweat as I stood up, man. And I rushed from head to toe. I spent two days running up and down the aisles of Kmart, picking up that tonic, getting all that hair color together, and getting ready to do a number on Money Incorporated. I was sniffing for the hair tonic. I was sniffing for the butch wax. And lo and behold, as I kicked down the door of the Ramada Indoor at 48th and 8th Avenue, just a bit north of the Mid-City Gym, I found the brother. Brutus the Barber Beefcake, with his feet propped up on an ottoman, laid back in a lazy boy, watching Mo, Larry, and Curly with an ice pack on his nose. Thank God for the man upstairs that Brutus the Barber is okay. So I took to the desert outside Las Vegas, chopping down some big nasty-looking cactuses, trying to dull up the titanium steel blades, chopped down a couple of small mountains, and then it came to me, brother. I knew that I'd just throw the scissors away because I'm just going to yank the hair right out of their heads. So Las Vegas, Nevada, and the whole wide world, what are you going to do when the mega maniacs run wild on you? The Hulkster, Hulk Hogan, and Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart, the Mega Maniacs, perhaps the next tag team champions of the World Wrestling Federation. The Hulkster has never looked better live and in mint condition. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.